Let's take a look at the API hierarchy, which will consist of a spectrum of low-level APIs for hardware, all the way up to very abstract high-level APIs for super powerful tasks, like creating an 128-layer neural network with just a few lines of code written with the Keras API. Let's start at the bottom. The lowest layer of abstraction is the layer that's implemented to target the different hardware platforms. And unless your company makes hardware, it's unlikely that you'll do much at this level, but it does exist. The next level is the TensorFlow C++ API. This is how you can write a custom TensorFlow operation. You would implement the function that you want in C++, register it as a TensorFlow operation. You can find more details on the TensorFlow documentation on extending an op. I'll provide the link. TensorFlow will give you a Python wrapper that you can use just like you would use an existing function. Assuming you're not an ML researcher, you don't normally have to do this. But if you ever needed to implement your own custom op, you would do it in C++, and it's not too hard. TensorFlow is extensible in that way. Now the core Python API is what contains much of the numeric processing code. Add, subtract, divide, matrix, multiply, etc. Creating variables, tensors, getting the right shape or dimension of your tensors and vectors, all of that is contained in the Python API. Then there are sets of Python modules that have high-level representation of useful neural network components. Let's say, for example, that you're interested in creating a new layer of hidden neurons within a ReLU activation function. You can do that just by using TF layers, just architect and construct it. If you want to compute the RMSE, or root mean squared error, as the data comes in, you can use tf.metrics. To compute cross-entropy with logics, for example, which is a common loss metric in classification problems, you can use tf.losses. These modules provide components that are useful when building custom neural network models. Why are custom neural network models emphasized? Because you often don't need a custom neural network model. Many times, you're quite happy to go with a relatively standard way of training, evaluating, and serving models. You don't need to customize the way you train. You're going to use one of the family of gradient descent-based optimizers, and you're going to backpropagate the weights and do this iteratively. In that case, don't write the low-level session loop. Just use an estimator or a high-level API, such as Keras. Speaking of which, the high-level APIs allow you to easily do distributed training, data pre-processing, the model definition, compilation, and overall training. It knows how to evaluate, how to create a checkpoint, how to save a model, how to set it up for TensorFlow serving, and more. And it comes with everything done in a sensible way that'll fit most of your ML models in production. Now, if you see example TensorFlow code on the internet that does not use the estimator API, ignore that code, walk away, it's not worth it. You'll have to write a lot of code to do device placement, memory management, and distribution. Let the high-level API handle all of that for you. So those are the TensorFlow levels of abstraction. On the side here, Cloud AI Platform is orthogonal, or it cuts across to this hierarchy. It means it goes from low-level to high-level APIs. Regardless of the abstraction level you're writing your TensorFlow code, using Cloud AI Platform, or CAIP, gives you that managed service. It's fully hosted TensorFlow. So you can run TensorFlow on the cloud on a cluster of machines without having to install any software or manage any servers. For the rest of this module, we'll be largely working with these top three APIs listed here. But before we start writing any API code and showing you the syntax for building machine learning models, we first really need to understand the pieces of data that we're working with. Much like in regular computer science classes, where you start with variables and their definitions before moving on to advanced topics like classes and methods and functions, that's exactly how we're going to start learning with TensorFlow components next.